is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are Black Mark. We are Detroit. Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is presented by Bell Tire. Over the years, Justin Verlander has made himself right at home here at Oriole Park at Camden Yards. JV is a perfect 7 and 0 here in Baltimore. And the hope is after tonight's game, he'll be a perfect 8 and 0. Nice night for baseball. Welcome to Baltimore. Game 2 of the series featuring the Tigers and the Orioles. Hi again, everyone. Welcome to Tigers Baseball. Mario and Pemba, Rod Allen. Glad to have you with us for game two in the series. The Tigers desperately need a win here tonight, Rod. They've got JV on the mound. He's been a good stopper over the years. You know, you brought it up. Historically, he has been outstanding in this ballpark. And then you add in the fact that most of the guys uh, that Buck Showalter were run at just in the day, they've had no success against him. And historically, he's been pretty good after Tigers' loss. So you add all that up, and it should be a nice recipe for a win today. All right, now in his last start, really good stuff against the Texas Rangers. That was good to see and maybe a lot of folks thought it was the best they've seen JV in a long time. It was the best that I saw that day and he had an explosive fastball that day against the Texas Rangers who had pretty much had their way against the Tigers in the first three games of that home series against them but he had a blazing fastball. He got lots of swings and misses on that fastball and his breaking stuff was lethal. It's the best I've seen collectively this year. The changeup was fading down and away from the right handers. He had an outstanding slider and he mixed in some really nice curveballs. This is a particular ballpark that yields a lot of home runs. Going to be very, very important for Justin Verlander to really work at the bottom of the strike zone with all those good breaking balls. Uh, I think the pink uniforms help as well on Mother's Day, no doubt about that. How about the Orioles team, man? They didn't get it done with power last night, but we do know they can hit the long ball. You know, they've got four guys right in the middle of their batting order from two to six that have 30 home run potential. Adam Jones got off to a great start this year, but he did wake up a couple of days ago in Minnesota with three home runs in that particular series. And then you start talking about Machado and Chris Davis and Mark Trumbull and the damage that they can do and have done in their major league careers. No one in the American League is playing any better baseball right now than Manny Machado on both sides of the ball. This is a very dangerous offense that, as you mentioned, got it done with singles last night, but there's a pretty good bet that these guys will be trying to hit it into the seat here this evening. All right, game two of the series coming up, but right now we send you back to the Call Sam Studios and John Keating.
Tigers fans checking into the ballpark tonight in a game two in this four game series featuring the Tigers and the Orioles. Beautiful night for baseball here tonight. Here's the starting lineup presented by the Southeast Michigan Ford dealers and for the Tigers it'll be Ian Kinsler leading it off. Then J.D. Martinez in right field. Miguel Cabrera is at first base. Nobody is hotter right now than Victor Martinez. He is DHing. Castellanos and Upton in the middle of the lineup as well. And then Moya, McCann, and Iglesias. And they are facing the right handed offerings of Chris Tillman. He's pretty good in this particular ballpark. 3 0 this season with a 2.39 ERA. However, uh, Tillman has given up quite a few first inning runs. Six in his seven starts. So look for the Tigers to get off to a quick start this evening. Tigers dropped the opener last night after leading five nothing the Orioles came storming back late against the Tigers bullpen we'll see what transpires here tonight. Kinsler at 296 he had a couple of hits in last night's ball game. Here's the first pitch of tonight's ball game. it's a ball inside 1 0 Tillman pretty much uh, goes from the stretch and it feels a lot more comfortable doing so you know, versus most conventional starters who wind up to start the ball game. 1 0 pitch is outside two balls and no strikes. He's got a fastball that gets all the way up to 95 miles an hour. He also has a curveball and a changeup and a slider. Loves to get to the breaking balls when there's runners in scoring position. Ian scored a couple of runs last night. The next one home misses again. The count goes to 3 0 and the Tigers lead off man. Four hits on the road trip so far for Kinsler. Tillman ready with the 3 0. And it's a strike called by home plate umpire Alan Porter. There's some rain in the area earlier today, but a nice night here at Camden Yards tonight. The rain has moved out. Yeah, the people here that watch the Oriole baseball on a nightly basis say this is one of the best nights they've had all year. We would agree. It seems that way. There's a check swing. Did he go? Yes, he went around. Three and two on Kinsler. That was close. And John Trump Payne is the uh, first base umpire. He may have uh, gone maybe too far, but it's close. J.D. Martinez will be next. Here's the 3 2. Fouled it off. He got a piece to stay alive. Orioles come in at 21 and 12 off to a nice start in the American League East. The Tigers of course struggling now at 15 and 19. And the Tigers have lost nine of their last 10. And the numbers are not pretty. They've been outscored by 30 runs in the last 10 games. That's driven back out of play. Uh, the Orioles meanwhile have won five in a row to jump up to the top spot in the American League East. So the Buck Showalter. And they are clicking on all cylinders. Uh, good starting pitching. Their bullpen has been locked down. Their offense has been really hot the last five days. Polar opposites for both of these teams right now. Again, the 3 2 popped him up. First base side for Chris Davis. Being called off by Scope, and the second baseman makes the catch. Let's take a look at the Baltimore Orioles starting defense brought to you by Tim Hortons, and it's a really good defense. Uh, Rickard in left, Jones in center field, Trumbull in right, Flaherty, Machado, Scope, and you also have Chris Davis in the infield, and Weeders is the catcher. 14 errors this season committed by their defense at this time last year, and they had committed 22. Here is J.D. Martinez. J.D. stands deep in the box and he swings right through at 0 and 1. There's a 92 mile power four seam fastball that stays on that plane right around the belt buckle and J.D. swung right through that couldn't catch up to it. Tillman likes to work up in the strike zone. Martinez one for three last night had a double. A slap foul back out of play. When you talk about the struggles the Tigers have had, I guess you can start with the two spot in their lineup there, batting just 191 out of that two spot. Martinez had been inserted there in place of Justin Upton, who has bounced down, but the uh, improvement has not been a whole lot. Here's the 0 2. JD fouled that one off the catcher, Matt Wieters. And that number two spot is vital. 
Uh, Ian Kensler for the most part has been on the bases all year long but if you're not getting anything from your number two hitters and here's the numbers right here and 191 average for the number two hitters 264 is the major league average but if that number two hitter is not getting on base then Miguel Cabrera is not getting many opportunities at all and then Victor Martinez who's been hot there's nobody for him to drive in. And conversely, the Orioles are hitting 372 out of the two spot in their lineup. Who's that, Manny? Yeah. <laughs> Next one home is hit back up the middle into center, and that's a base hit. An 0 2 single for J.D. Martinez. And Tillman threw a couple of fastballs right by J.D. Martinez. He was a little tardy on them, and then he came back with something a little softer 78 mile per hour breaking ball that J.D. was able to catch up to. And whistled right past the second baseman, Jonathan Scope. Tigers have their first hit of the night, and that'll bring up Miguel Cabrera. Cabrera last night was one out of four. His numbers against Tillman over the years, pretty good. Five for 13 with a home run. Driven in the air to right field. Backing up Trumbo to the track in front of the wall leaps and makes the catch. And J.D. will head back to first base. It fell a couple of feet short of leaving the ballpark. Trumbo had much more room than he thought he did. He almost played that into a double for Miguel Cabrera. He could have kept running a couple more steps before this jump. But he had no idea where he was at because he never took his eye off the ball. Bit of an awkward looking play, but Trumbo made the play. Two outs now for Victor Martinez. Well, Victor now is up to 362 with 10 hits in his last 13 at bats. Victor last night had three more hits. And they continue to shift against him defensively, even though he has defeated that shift quite a bit in the last week or so. And Vimart looks at a strike on the outer edge, 0 and 1. There's the shift that they play. It is Flaherty, the third baseman out in short right field. Here's the 0-1. On the outer edge again, 0-2. Victor at 362, along with Nick Castellanos leading the American League. It's been a huge month of May for Martinez. And the 0-2. There again he goes against the shift. An 0-2 base hit to left field. And Victor Martinez is just absolutely on fire. I don't even know why you overshift Victor. And then on top of that, if you're Tillman, you throw him a fastball at 92 on the outside part of the plate that Victor Martinez just rips the opposite way. I don't know what they were expecting a 362 hitter to do with that pitch. Victor just whistled that thing. Right by Machado. Victor is awfully tough to strike out. And then when you add in the fact that what he does when he's behind in the count at 422, simply amazing. The major league average is probably under 200 after you've fallen behind in the count. Well, here is Castellanos, who was held hitless in last night's ball game. He was 0 for 5. Ooh, you haven't said that much this year. Yeah, I mean, I can't remember the last time I said that. His 16 game road hitting streak came to an end last night as well. However, his numbers against the Orioles, as you see, just one hit in his last 38 B's against Baltimore. Tillman ready with the 1 0 pitch. Castellanos fouls it back. By the way, if the Tigers combine for three or more home runs in this game, bring a copy of the box score to a participating Arby's location tomorrow and get a free small order of curly fries. One one on Castellanos. 
Tigers have a pair of hits here in the first Martinez JD that is and Victor Martinez. One one is a ball high and away two and one. Tillman is 28 years old out of Anaheim California won 11 ball games last year but his ERA was much higher than it was the previous season it was nearly five last year. He's not giving up many home runs this year either he's only given up one home run so far this season. He gave up 20 last year but a couple of years ago you know, Tillman served up 33 gopher balls so he's getting better in that regard and the reason for that is he's not throwing nearly as many four seam fastballs as he used to more two seamers more cutters these days thrown by Chris Tillman. Two one is fouled off. We talked about the fact that he has struggled in the first inning of games this year. And right. A lot of times uh, pitching coaches will try and find different ways to get their guys ready for that first inning. And they've tried all of that with Tillman. They've tried throwing the first inning in the bullpen. They've tried uh, simulating hitters being in the batter's box. Uh, they've tried sitting down getting up like you've already started the inning but nothing has seemed to work for Dave Wallace. Of the pitching coach and Chris Tillman. Two and two on Castellanos. Tigers have two on, two out. In the ball game last night, the Tigers got a run in the first inning, eventually building a five nothing lead, which would not stand up. Here's the two two, bouncing ball to third. Down to a knee as Flaherty goes to second for the force. Two tire the side. No runs, two hits, two men left. Bottom of the first here tonight in Baltimore, Justin Verlander presented by Family Heating, Cooling, and Electrical. Justin Verlander, two and three on the season, but in his last outing, probably his best overall effort. Seven no hit innings, excuse me, seven no run innings against the Texas Rangers. Great fastball, great breaking ball. He'll need to be that good here today against this Baltimore offense. Joey Rickard will be the first man that he will face. Verlander goes to work with the high socks tonight and the high tops as well. Yeah, you know, Rickard really loves pitching in this ballpark. I mean, hitting in this ballpark. His number is nearly 400. He struggles on the road. Justin had those high socks last time, Mario, on Mother's Day, and he dealt. So maybe there's a little superstition going on. He had the high tops too. They were much more colorful on opening day, but high tops nonetheless. Here's the 0 1. Hit hard right to third. Nice play by Castellanos. One out. Here is the rest of the lineup for the Orioles presented by the Metro Detroit Chevy dealers for Baltimore tonight. Rickard Machado Jones at the top. You got Davis Trumbo and Weeters in the middle of the lineup tonight. Alvarez the DH then Scope and Ryan Flaherty. Nice reactions at third base here on this play and by Cassianos takes one step picks it and firm throw across the diamond to Miguel. 
We talk about Nick's offensive output this year, but man, defensively, he has taken that next step as well. Here's Manny Machado. Only three for 14 career against Verlander, five strikeouts. Justin works home a strike at the knee zone one. Machado's hit 10 home runs. He's knocked in 23. High pop up. Right side of the infield for Kinsler. And there are two gone. And Verlander got away with that hanging breaking ball there to Machado. Take a look at the Tigers starting defense presented by Beaumont Health. And left to right, you've got the youngster Moya. You've got Upton in center. J.D. Martinez in right, third to first. Castellanos, Iglesias, Kinsler, and the big fella. Miguel Cabrera, James McCann back in there after a night off last night. Here's Adam Jones now with two outs. Jones in the ball game last night, one for five with an RBI. And he follows the first one off the mask of McCann. You saw those numbers uh, Jones has posted against Verlander, 229 batting average with a couple of home runs. Those are pretty much the best numbers of anybody in their team they've had against Justin Verlander. He has pretty much dominated the Baltimore Orioles. Justin in search of the 1 2 3 first inning. Here's the 0 1. Ooh, good paint. Paint at a 91. No balls, two strikes. If you don't have 95 mile power fastball, it's imperative that you locate your heater where he just located this one. 91 right at the glove of James McKean. Here are tonight's field conditions presented by Ace Hardware and the Scotts Company. Much better night tonight. 75 degrees, so it's about 10 degrees warmer tonight than it was last night. Most of the time when we finally get to Baltimore, it's in the heat of the summer and it's hot and it's sticky. But it's all good. It's a wonderful venue. Now again the 0-2. Pulled on the ground. Nice play. Iglesias to his feet. Gonna be tough to get him. And Iglesias just couldn't get anything on the throw. One of the things that we do know about Adam Jones, once you get ahead of him, most guys like to throw him sliders. And even if you do throw him a slider and you locate it on the outside part of the plate, this is not a bad pitch, but he's able to get out there and yank it back to the pool field, nearly gets it past Iglesias. Iglesias able to glove it, but not able to get a throw off. Or at least a good throw. What's Iggy doing, man? I don't know, man, but he threw a worm burner out there to first base. <laughs> well, he gave it a shot. A for effort, Iglesias. <laughs> Here's Chris Davis. Davis batting 259 homers. And JV starts him off up high with a fastball. And Davis has got incredible power. He's already homered nine times this year. He has hit eight home runs over his career on the Utah Street out beyond the right field wall. Eight of them? Eight of them. That's why they call him Crush Davis. He's got that softball stance too. He stands straight up and down like he's playing soft, a uh, slow pitch softball. And, but if you throw it in his happy zone, and he loves the ball down, and he can do a lot of damage. Wow, how about that list? Since 2012, 168 homers leading that list. Of impressive sluggers. A couple of fastballs upstairs that uh, Davis is able to lay off of. Now Verlander finds himself in a dangerous count to a dangerous hitter. That's where you want to pitch Davis, however, you want to pitch him up. Davis last year led the major leagues with 47 home runs. The 2 0. 3 0 on Davis. Verlander for as well as he has pitched here in this ballpark and really career wise against the Orioles wherever they play his last two have not been all that good though they've gotten to him the last two times out. One of those was in the postseason I believe a couple years ago. Twelve earned runs in nine and two thirds in his last two starts. 
Davis will take and it's a strike three and one. These are the numbers overall nine and three this is regular season three eight nine but that ERA has uh, jumped up considerably because of the last two starts. Three one pitch and he lost in ball four. Infield single and a walk putting two aboard. This Orioles team man they just keep running guys up there that can hit the long ball. Here's Trumbo. He's hit 11 homers this year and he's driven in 27 and his OPS is 984. He's also reached base consecutively 25 times which is in 25 consecutive games which is the longest streak in the majors. Last night Trumbo did not have a hit but he did walk. And at least for a month and a half this season his career has been resurrected a bit. Swing and a miss. So and one. Outstanding slider there thrown by Verlander. You really can't locate the slider any better than you located that one. And both these teams love to swing at the first pitch. Justin Verlander knows that. And just like Chris Tillman knows, the Tigers love to swing in a lot of first pitches. You don't really necessarily want to throw that slider for a strike, do you? You just want that result. You want to disguise it like it's going to be a strike, like it looks like a fastball, so you can get him to swing at it. Bouncer right back to the mound, knocked down by Justin. That'll take care of the Orioles. No runs, one hit, one walk. Two men left on a gorgeous night in Baltimore. Here's our 1 800 call, Sam. Uh, Upton yesterday taking some batting practice. Look at the bat on the ground. What he's trying to work on is lines where he sets his foot down. And then he worked it to perfection in the game last night. He doubled in the right center field against Jimenez. I had a conversation with Justin today, and he said that in that particular swing, what he worked on in batting practice, he did it to perfection. He got the front foot up and down in a hurry, which gave him a nice base. And then his hands were able to work more efficiently for him. In his previous swings the last few days, his hands are just way too quiet and there was no bat speed there for Justin. Well, Upton has doubles in each of his last two games, including one against Max Scherzer a couple of nights ago in Washington. Owen won the count on Upton. Moya than McCann to follow. Tillman missing outside, one ball in, one strike. Justin on Sunday snapped an 0 for 19 slump. It's just been a uh, tough start for a guy that has been streaky at times in his career. But this streak has lasted a bit. There's a check swing, a strike on the outer edge. Justin would probably never admit it, but the pressure has to be getting to him. I mean, you have a team that has lost nine of its last 10. 
and you know that you're a guy that was brought in to really help out the offense which is struggling. So it's only natural for you uh, to feel the pressure. Swing and a miss. Down he goes. A strikeout for Tillman, his first. One away. For whatever reason, Tillman has had his way uh, against Tigers' bats in his career. Uh, he's pitched very well against Detroit. Lots of strikeouts, and they haven't done much damage against him. 4 0 career against the Tigers, an ERA sub three. 296 to be exact. And whip just a shade over one. Look at the opponent's batting average. And seven starts are hitting 183 against this cat. Here's Stephen Moya. The Tigers have had some good offensive teams the last four or five years. They really have. And, and Tillman has been a solid major league starter, maybe above average, I think you could say. He's not been an ace type guy, but mm -mm. the numbers, though, just are uh, awfully good against the Tigers. Sometimes you can't figure it out. He's a number one on this particular team, but he's probably a nice number three on most teams. One ball, one strike on Stephen Moya. Well, Moya's going to have to start to lay off the elevated fastball. Bender bouncing in, two balls and one strike. It's a knuckle curve that uh, Tillman throws. And we also told you that he has. A nice little slider that he will throw on occasion, but most of his pitches are fastball 60 65 percent. Fastballs to the righties and the lefties, either a two seamer or a cutter. Driven toward right field, sinking. Trumbo coming on, sliding, can't get it, rolls by. Him. Jones will back him up, and Moya will go to second with a stand up double. Trumbo sold out on that ball, and it got by him. And nice job there by Adam Jones, the center fielder, to back up Trumbo on that particular ball. And for Moya, his third hit since returning last night. Yeah, he had two singles the opposite way in last night's game. Well, actually, one to right, one to left. Here is James McCann. Boy, they got to get him going. It's been a tough year so far for James. Batting just 108 coming in, one for 10 on the road trip. And McCann looks at a ball low. Tillman, when there's runners in scoring position, he will go to his slider quite a bit. That first pitch of the air to McCann was a slider. McCann looks at a ball outside, two and all the count. When you talk about McCann, obviously his his main value to this team is what he provides behind the dish as a catcher, as a leader, but there's no reason, Rod, why this guy can't be a solid 250, 260 big league hitter with some power, maybe even better than that. Especially what he did last year uh, in really getting his first tour uh, of duty in the big leagues. He held himself, he handled himself very nicely. Here's the 2 0. So you know he can do it. It's a matter of getting comfortable again, getting some good pitches to hit, and got to work your way out of it. One thing the Tigers continue to do, they continue to work. If you get here in the afternoon about 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, just about the entire team is here. Guys are doing a lot of things and trying to get better. Well, if you were to walk into the clubhouse after that loss last night and mm. compare the mood to what it was like today before this game, night and day, mm. they've got a great ability to turn the page. Now they just have to start putting some wins together. Here's the 2 1. Strike call 2 and 2. I don't know what uh, James is looking for there, but it's a fastball and a, a fastball counted about 92 miles an hour. Pretty good pitch to hit. Is that a sign where he might be in between right now? Thinking too much. Yeah. Anytime you get yourself in a 2 1 count against a guy that throws 65% fastballs, that's what you got to look for. And it missed outside 3 and 2 now on McCann. Iglesias waiting on deck. We're in the second. The Tigers have a double from Stephen Moya. Now time called by McCann. Yeah, Upton and also Stephen Moya getting the starts in the outfield today, and not Anthony Ghost. And surprisingly, Anthony Ghost came in 
Six for ten in his career against Tim. Wow. There's Anthony who did not play last night either. Usually the uh, computer would give you green light on that day. That's right. Here's a 3 2. And he walked in ball four, so the Tigers have two aboard. By the way, stay tuned to Tigers Live following the game. We select the Fox Sports Detroit Tigers player of the game. Presented by McDonald's. Stop by for your breakfast favorites. Now being served all day long. Well, two on now with one out. We'll see what Iglesias can do. Only two for 12 career versus Tillman. He'll slap it foul back out of play 0 and 1. Iglesias homered against Max Scherzer two nights ago for a Tigers run early in that game, and it was his first home run since July, mid July of last season. Jose, not known for his power, got off to a nice start in April of this year, but it's since cooled. One and one. Tillman last year 11 and 11 4 9 9 ERA he in fact was the Orioles opening day starter last season. Here's the 1 1. Bouncing ball towards short Machado he'll fire to second one relay to first there's a double play. 6 4 3 and the Tigers rally fizzles. Second tonight here in Baltimore, the Bernstein advantage brings you the pitcher batter matchup as Matt Weider plays it off for the Orioles. You can see that his success rate against Verlander has not been awfully good. Not good at all, as a matter of fact. The three hits, one double, one triple, and one home run. In fact, that triple that Weider's hit was for his first major league hit off JV. And that was back in 2009 in this ballpark. Verlander gave up a single and a walk, but no damage in the first, and he delivers strike one to Matt Wieters. Wieters has had three separate seasons in which he has hit 20 home runs. Here's the 0 1 pitch. Tommy John surgery a couple of years ago for Weeders and he got off to a slow start last year and really did not have a good season. Therefore, 
and was not going to command a lot of dollars in the free agent market. So he took the qualifying offer uh, that was offered to him uh, for what is it, 15, nine million dollars is what the qualifying offer is? Yeah, 15, eight, something like that. It's almost 16 million, but. Uh, what I guess he's betting on Rod is that he can kind of reset this year and then test the market next year. Exactly. Cody Ra Kobe Rasmus also of the Houston Astros took the qualifying offer from the Astros. And he's also hoping to stay in Houston, sign a long term deal. But the you know, leaders and Scott Boris, they felt like he needed to have, have, go have another year you know, to really have a good offseason. There is Kinsler to make that play, and Weeder is his out one away. Here is the Chevy Silverado most dependable player and Rod you touched on this when he comes here to Camden Yards he makes himself at home. You know he always pitches in front of a lot of family and friends at Camden Yards Justin Verlander from Virginia and they always come to watch him and he never disappoints him. He just pitches his best baseball right here in Camden. He'll face Pedro Alvarez with one out. They have the shift on against Alvarez. It's fouled off on one. Outstanding pitch here. We've already told you that the Orioles swing more at first pitches than anybody. So what does Justin do? He fades a nice little change up up there that gets him out on that front foot. That would be Alvarez. And Alvarez swings right over the top of him. That is a perfect swing there to demonstrate what a changeup is designed to do. Get the guy off balance. Alvarez this year batting 214. He has two home runs. One of them was a monster of a home run that actually hit the warehouse out in right field on one bounce. Ooh. He's got that kind of sock in his bat. Now the 1 1 pitch. You know, the uh, latest big stat now is exit speed, the ball off the bat. Yep, yep. You know, anything around 100 miles an hour is really good. Yes. On that home run, they clocked it at 108. Ooh. Watch out for batted balls indeed. Now it'll be on Utah Street in right field. It is not easy hitting that warehouse. Here's the one two. Fouled off. Orlando has that uh, really good breaking ball again here tonight. He's thrown some good change ups. He's thrown a couple of good sliders. A couple of good curve balls too. Here's a nice breaking ball. Alvarez somehow got a piece of it. You really have to go up there and battle against a guy like Verlander who has four of those above average pitches in the big leagues. There's a swing and a miss, and down he goes. And Verlander carved Alvarez up very nicely. Lots of breaking balls, but he finished them off with that heater upstairs. Hey, Menards brings you the big money encounter, and you kind of touched on this. The Orioles are a team that love to swing at that first pitch, and when they do, the numbers are pretty good. Yeah, they do damage when they do. Boston on that list, Seattle also on that list, Detroit and Pittsburgh. Two aggressive teams in this series. Strike one on Jonathan Scope. Verlander so far here in the very first couple of innings, sort of pitching backwards and starting them off with breaking balls, then getting to the fastball. Open the ball game last night. Two for four had a huge hit, a triple to the corner in right field. He finished with three RBIs. That hit really kind of put the final nail in for the Tigers last night. Two balls and one strike. Scope from the island of Curacao. 15 home runs last year. And he rips that one foul. Good two seam fastball there, ran on the hands of Scope. Scope's a big guy. You don't normally see guys his size playing second base. He's a third baseman by trade. He's got a very strong throwing arm. He's got a lot of power, too. So far, Justin, very good with first pitch strikes. He is seven of eight so far. In the first couple of innings, 28 pitches so far. Here's the 2 2. 
fouled away. 93 on that last fastball from Justin. Flaherty waiting on deck, their number nine hitter. Justin, just two starts ago, gave up seven runs in five innings in Cleveland. Then he bounced back with that great start against Texas. More of what the Tigers will be needing the rest of the way. It'll bounce in, run the count full now at three and two. Pretty good ratio. After 30 pitches. Chopper hit to third. Nice high hop for Castellanos. Verlander a one, two, three, second. Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is brought to you by Comerica Bank. Raise your expectations of what a bank can be when it's time. Come to Comerica. And by Jeep. Come discover great deals during the Jeep Drive and Discover event. Spectacular night here in Baltimore tonight. The Tigers and O's game two in this four game weekend series. No score as we go to the third. Ian Kinsler starts it off. Tillman has a little deception in his delivery. Uh, once he starts, after he breaks his hands, he kind of pauses for a moment. Not like the Japanese players, but there's a little slowing down of the delivery, which could sometimes be deceptive to the hitter. Ian popped up back in the first inning. Here's a good look at that uh, delivery from Tillman, who, I don't know, I guess any kind of deception you can have. Yeah, especially when you only throw 92, 93. A little bit outside, two balls and one strike. Now, when you hit in your days as a player and you faced a guy with a little bit of deception or hesitation, what is the key? I would simply focus on the release point. I would not worry about anything that he did with his lower half. I would simply wait until the ball got up into the throwing window and I would try to pick it up there. That's hammered to left. It's going to drop in. Base hit in front of Rickard. All the other movements and hesitations and stops and starts that a pitcher would do, I would just block them out of my mind. A little breaking ball there that stays up there nicely for Ian Kensler to get out in front of and hit back to the pole field for. A solid single and the fourth hit of the game for the Tigers. Well, since the start of 2015, Kinsler and Machado on the list of most hits. Look at Altuve, man. 246. All infielders on that list. All infielders. 
Martinez pounds it foul back out of play. JD had a single in the first inning after falling behind in the count. It's good to see. And JD Martinez, we know he's much better than a 238 hitter. After a great start this year, Martinez came in batting 140 in the month of May. Aside from his double last night, he drew a couple of walks and has another hit tonight. So hopefully those are signs that JD is about back. Here's the 0-1. 1 and 2 again on Martinez. For a guy that just throws 92 miles an hour, Tillman sure has gotten a lot of swings and misses here so far tonight. It's one thing we were talking about before the game. His swings and misses this year are up. A lot of forcing fastballs up in the zone. Especially when he gets a hit. And Martinez down on strikes. Second strikeout for Tillman. Hey, this Tuesday, the Tigers take on the Minnesota Twins at 7 10 p.m. The first 10,000 fans receive a free Ian Kinsler bobblehead. For tickets, visit Tigers.com or call 866 66 Tiger. Minnesota Twins, man, they're streaking in the wrong direction again. Coming into play today, they have dropped seven in a row. Oh. What they start the season nine in a row dropping oh, nine oh, straight yep. oh and nine to start the year. Miggy looks at a strike. They are bearing. Uh, they're 14 games out of first place. Tigers seven and a half games behind the White Sox. The other thing about Minnesota when you try and claw back into the race in your division after that slow start it's not going to happen if you go two and 13 which is what they are against the Central. Only two wins against teams within the division. 0 oh and 2 on Cabrera. Miguel had a pretty good pitch to hit right there. It was a hanging breaking ball that and then Tillman got away with. Cabrera came within feet of hitting one out to right field his first time up. Halfway onto the warning track and Trumbo ran it down. He go two. Way too high. Historically, uh, Miguel Cabrera has uh, punished in Baltimore Oriole pitching. Came into last night's contest with a career 391 batting average against Baltimore. Cabrera is still looking for that 500th career double. He's standing at 499 right now. He's been sitting on that for a minute too. Yeah, it's been a while. And really, Rod, when you look at Cabrera and Victor Martinez, your three and four guys, there have been a lot of hits recently, but most of them singles. Right. I would agree with that. There hasn't been that extra base power that you expect out of those two. The one, two. There is Victor Martinez waiting on deck. Tigers no runs on four hits and the Orioles no runs on one hit. The other storyline from last night is the Tigers stranded 12 men on base last evening. Tillman's one two swing and a miss. And Cabrera is out two gone. Well, the one guy that continues to hit, that would be Victor Martinez, who threw out three lousy singles again in last night's game. That one, he flared the opposite way. And then he went right back through the center of the diamond, beating the shift, and then slashed another one the other way for an RBI. And today, he did the same exact thing. 0 oh. 2. So the question is, when do they stop the shifting? Well, they have the, they have, uh, the shortstop now, Manny Machado, in the outfield now. So this is a different kind of shift. We've never seen this kind of shift where they take the shortstop, the guy that's kind of stayed home, and then they park him into the outfield. I have not seen this before. It's a first for me, not that deep. Yeah, so Buck Showalter is trying to figure out a way and to get Victor out with still shifting. 
But they didn't do this in his first at bat. No, did they? no. Manny Machado was on the dirt. So they're adjusting on the fly here tonight. Hey, Buck's trying anything. <laughs> He's known for that. Yes, he is. He is known for that. Flaherty is out in right field. That's their third baseman. Look at this alignment, man. This I've is not the game this. we grew up knowing, man. No, it really is it's a different game. It has changed dramatically the last couple of years. The 0 1. Oh, Kinsler are going to try and get the second. Here's the throw. Oh, got him. Matt Wieters fired a bullet right on the bag. And Kinsler tries to advance on a pitch in the dirt. See if the Tigers want to check this one out. It was a bang bang play. The Orioles trying to run off the field, but we'll have to wait and see if Brad wants to challenge this. Nope. And that'll be it for the Tigers here in the third. No runs, one hit. Nobody left. Uh, great throw from Weeders. Tried to advance on a ball in the dirt, and Matt Wieters was up to the task. Ian Kinsler probably should have stayed at first base because he didn't get a great break. Yeah, after the ball went in the dirt, and therefore that gave Wieters an opportunity to throw him out. But I understand Kinsler, just like the rest of his teammates, they are all trying to get something going. Flaherty leads it off, and he'll take a ball down low. Verlander now one time through the lineup, seven of nine in first pitch strikes. Got Flaherty, then Rickard, and Machado. 9 1 2 for the O's. Bouncing ball, first base side for Miguel. That'll be a three unassisted, one out. Time for a game break now. Here's Mickey York. Mick, thanks. At least somebody can hit Tomlin. <laughs> I mean, we can't. <laughs> we can. 464 feet. That boy uh, Miguel Sano has got uh, rooftop power, light tower power. Here's Joey Rickard. One out, nobody on. Rooftop was the nickname of Jason Thompson. Yes, it was. He used to put him on the roof out in right field at Tiger Stadium. Rickard is 0 for 1 with the ground ball, the University of Arizona product. We'll chop that one foul 0 and 2. My daughter went to school same time at the U of A that Rickard was there. Isn't that right? Yep, yep. Does she know him? She knew of him. I mean, she told me there were a couple of uh, 
the parties that they, ah. were at, they were at in college. You know they do party a little bit in college, right? <laughs> Especially out in Arizona. You know it. So she knew him. Here's the 0-2 coming home. Ooh. Ooh, look out. Man. Ooh. That came in his chin. It's dangerous 0-2 pitch. I'm sure there's no intent by Justin Verlander, but it's still a dangerous pitch. And for you kids at home, that's exactly how you get out of the way of a ball. You turn your face away so you don't get hit in the face. If the ball does hit you, it hits you in the back of the helmet or it hits you in the back. But don't ever turn the other way. It's a close shave. One ball, two strikes. He don't even look like he's old enough to shave. No, I was about to say the same thing. Oh, he hit him. Wow. Verlander came up at his chin and then he drilled him. The crowd not digging that, but there's no way that versus Verlander is hitting Rickard on purpose, not with uh, Manny Machado coming up, followed by Adam Jones and some of the other guys they have in their lineup. There's no way. That was a breaking ball, too. Yeah, and nor would there be any reason to go after Rickard. So put a man on, a man out, and bring up Manny Machado. Popped up to the second baseman in his first at bat. Machado is hit safely in six consecutive games. Did you know today was Friday the 13th? I did. You're not superstitious though, are I'm you? not. For the most part, I'm not. How about you? No, not at all. No. Manny, one of uh, 16 major leaguers that wear the number 13. He's not superstitious. There's a check swing low. Now, if I'm given a floor on the 13th or a room on the 13th floor in a hotel, <laughs> you get out of there. I, yeah, I'm getting out of there. Some hotels don't even have 13th uh, floors oh, anymore. But, but I draw the line there, man. I can't do floor 13. They will stick the media on the floor, the 13th <laughs> floor too, won't they? <laughs> yes, they will. <laughs> a Rod wears 13. Hanley Ramirez 13. Marcelo Zuna. Uh, Drubo Cabrera. A lot of 13s in the big leagues. Salvador Perez even wears 13. Runner goes on 1 0. Here's the throw by McCann. The tag. See him. Oh, McCann and just gunned him down with a peg to Kinsler. And yeah, Rickard really did not have a great jump. One of the things that Verlander does very well, he has quick feet, so you can't get too far off the base paths. And then a really nice throw down to second base, which carried right into the path of the base runner sliding, and that tag was easy to apply for Ian Kinsler. They're empty now. On a perfect throw by James McCann. Here's the 2-0. Two and one on Machado. Sixty percent now for James McCann. And Machado off balance looks at a strike. That's a good pitch. Machado looking for a fastball. Verlander threw a front door breaking ball there. He started it right at Manny. Manny gave up on it, and the ball caught the inside corner. Three two now on Machado. Adam Jones on deck. <laughs> Yeah, rule of thumb if you throw that breaking ball three and two and two and you miss with it you can't be afraid to come back with it on the three two pitch. Let's see what they sell on. Swing and a miss struck him out and he came back with that breaking ball. Verlander gets his second strikeout tonight. No runs no hits nobody left.
it is time now for T-Mobile's greater coverage of baseball. Here's what's going on around the big leagues. How about those Boston Red Sox? They've got uh, a young team for the most part, and Big Poppy continues to go off. And JBJ, uh, Jackie Bradley Jr., 18-game hitting streak. Playing Kershaw's pretty good, isn't he? Yeah, my goodness, man. How this guy, man? He's Hall of Fame. Yep, he's uh, he's just about there. Nolan Arenado is a guy that we don't know much about in the American League. But we've seen him when we played the Rockies. He's pretty good. Yeah, one of the best third basemen in our sport, playing in Colorado. Here we go to the fourth inning, and for the Tigers, Victor Martinez. He was up there when Kinsler was thrown out last inning, and there's a strike call. Victor had a single in the first, and now 11 for his last 14. There's that shift we were talking about, and now everybody's on the outfield guys. <laughs> Except David. Come on, man. Apparently they're playing with six outfielders against Victor Martinez. But Show Walter says, we'll try this. Let's see how this works. Well, I guess if it's not it's not cheap because they allow you to do it. There is literally one guy on the dirt on the infield. Tillman ready with the 0-2. Checked it and he went strike three. Three straight strikeouts now for Tillman. Bring up Castellanos. So far Tillman really has not made many mistakes with his fastball. He's kept his fastball for the most part up in the strike zone. A belt buckle or higher. And he's thrown some really good breaking balls to the Tigers. He's kept them off balance pretty good today. So far. Castellanos hit into a four, sending the first inning. Little chopper slowly toward the shortstop, Machado. Two up, two down. Tigers fans, if you can't catch the games on TV, you can stream them live on your mobile device with the all new Fox Sports Go app. Download the app and take Fox Sports Detroit and Tigers baseball with you. Wherever you go. A lot of ways to watch baseball these days. More than I can count. Here's Justin Upton. Upton struck out in the first. Strike one. Yeah, Tillman of the uh, pitches he's thrown today, 57 of those, about 64% have been fastballs. So he comes right at you. And that's exactly what the scouting report says. 64% I mean, fastballs. Well, the Orioles did well back in 08 when they traded Eric Bedard, who was probably at his zenith when you talk about his, his uh, return value because they got Jones, Adam Jones, their center fielder, and Tillman. And in they that got, deal. Yeah, they got their opening day starter and also uh, an all star center fielder for the last. Eight nine years. It's a pretty good haul. There's a lot of uh, center fielders that have come into the game. The guy Pilar in Toronto, Kiermaier in Tampa. Lots of good center fielders, uh, but none has been as consistent as he has been the last number of years. That would be Jones in center field. Even Lorenzo Cain, who is a very good defender now in center field, but Jones has been the staple of the position for almost a decade now. Speed, power. Good arm, good leadership qualities, does a lot in the community. From Chula Vista, California, San Diego. 60 now for Tillman, 41 of which have been strikes. Here's the 2 2. Upton takes low, 3 2. The imposing figure of Stephen Moya waiting on deck. Now the 3 2. Foul tip into the glove for strike three. He's just throwing that fastball right by a lot of these Tigers hitters. 1 2 3 inning on a gorgeous night in the inner harbor of Baltimore.
58% fastball. Last year, fastball around 50%, but he has more confidence in that pitch. 11% with the changeup. You can see 18% with that slider. That's gone way up the last couple of years as he's become more comfortable with that weapon. Here's Adam Jones to get it started in the fourth inning. Jones, Davis, Trumbo, the middle of the Orioles lineup. However, tonight, and we talked about this at the top of the show, Mario, one of the things that Verlander would have to do is keep these guys off balance, the Baltimore Orioles hitters. He's only thrown 40% fastball so far tonight. Well, he's done 60% a great job. off speed. Well, when you consider the Orioles had an infield hit in the first, and they hit batter in the third, really, uh, it's about it. They had to do this walk, but. A good pitching duel. He's pretty much picking up right where he left off in his last outing against the Texas Rangers when he was sensational. There's a soft liner hit right to Iglesias. One gone in the fourth. Just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game brought to you by Miller Lights. Here's Chris Davis. Base on balls in the first inning for Davis. He'll drive this one to right field, and that's going to drop base hit right in front of JD. And Davis has a one out single. He's on base for the second time. You don't mind giving up singles to Davis. That's a changeup that leaked back over the heart of the plate, and he was able to get down and get it. We told you he's a low ball hitter, and, but the fact of the matter is, if you can keep him from hitting extra base hits and have him parked at first base, it's a win-win. Now Trumbo hit one right back to the mound in his only at bat, 0 for 1. Was just the second hit allowed by Verlander in this contest. Davis being chased back. Trumbo takes a strike. 0 and 2. And Trumbo sitting on something soft. And Verlander has thrown 60% off speed pitches and so far here today. And Trumbo, no doubt, was sitting on one of those off speed pitches. And Verlander threw that fastball right down the middle. Trumbo, his biggest year was in 2013 with the Angels, 100 RBIs that year. The organization he came up with, swing and a miss. That didn't take long. We're going to make that our bail tire pitch by pitch. And Justin Verlander just reached back and got a little extra for Trumbo. A fastball there, then another another fastball right down the middle, and then he climbed the ladder a little higher to finish him off. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Each fastball just a little bit higher. Now Matt Wieters, 4-3 ground out, his first time to the plate. Swings right through at 0-1. Both these guys uh, throwing fastballs right by the hitters this evening. Tillman has a good fastball, 92 to 94. Has gotten a lot of swing misses, and so has Justin. They certainly are getting it done in similar ways, and the results have been similar as well. Neither team with a run so far. Just off the edge, 1 1 on Weeders. Three-time All-Star, couple of Gold Gloves, Matt Wieters, 
Rod mentioned the Tommy John surgery that he had. That is not a pitcher specific surgery anymore. Here's the 1 1. 1 and 2. Verlander, three strikeouts. He has surrendered one walk. He's also hit one batter tonight, and he continues to pitch well in this ballpark. He came in 7 0 career at Camden Yards. The one two. Two balls, two strikes. It was after his start against Cleveland that Verlander vowed that he was going to get better. He felt that he was getting closer and closer to being the guy that well that we saw on opening day that took a no hitter into the sixth in Miami. And, and I guess he made good on it his last start against Texas. He pretty much guaranteed a win in his next start. And he did his best to secure that win. Two, two is slap five. He put seven innings and did not give up anything to Texas. And he has rolled that over into a good start here tonight in Baltimore. Because last year, really from July on, he was the Justin Verlander that many had experienced earlier in his career. Maybe not with the same velocity, but he certainly had the same results. Outside, three balls and two strikes. Let's we'll get the runner at first to head start. Chris Davis will be on the move. Justin takes a step back now, goes back to the grass to gather his thoughts, takes a deep breath. Here's the 3 2. Swing and a miss struck him out. One handed swing. Four strikeouts for Justin. No runs, one hit. We're through four at Camden Yards.
25th here at Camden Yards and Justin Verlander rookie of the year Cy Young winner MVP arguably the most decorated player out of the 2004 draft but he was drafted number two overall the guy drafted number one Matt Bush by the San Diego Padres just today called up for the very first time by the Texas Rangers he is now a big leaguer after 12 years he had some personal problems issues with alcohol actually spent three years in prison after nearly killing a guy during a DUI incident he got out of jail in December signed by the Rangers gets called up today and here are just a few of the guys in this game today who were drafted in that very same class as Verlander and Bush check out Chris David 1496 pick of the draft had a pretty good career as Matt Bush's just get started today guys back up to you All right, Trent thanks I didn't realize Trumbo and uh, Davis were in that, uh, that draft as well no I didn't realize that uh, I knew Mark Lowe was because I saw him down in the dugout today and he was talking to Trevor about that draft and he was also commenting on uh, Matt Bush that's really a remarkable story let's hope that uh, he's able to get his life together and uh, and be a productive citizen. Davis was actually drafted that year but did not sign until a couple of years later. Uh, but that uh, Matt Bush story is uh, quite amazing. He was an infielder wasn't he? He was. He came up as a shortstop third baseman drafted by the San Diego Padres did not pan out at all. Had issues from the word go high school kid very young. Steven Moya is starting things off here in the fifth inning. We are scoreless tonight. We expected it might be a pitcher's duel. It has been. Well, something's got to give here today. Neither guy has lost. Verlander hasn't lost in this ballpark to the Orioles, and Tillman hasn't lost overall to Detroit. Moy is out on the slow tap back to the mound. One gone. The one thing that's really helped Tillman take that next step this year in pitching here in this particular ballpark is the fact that he's really got a lot of confidence in his slider. And because he has confidence in that pitch, it makes the fastball much better. We've already seen lots of swings and misses on a 92 mile power here and that he has been featuring. Here's McCann. You know, a lot of pitching coaches and a lot of general managers are huge into spin rate on the fastball. And they will tell you that his spin rate is one of the best for a right handed pitcher. That would be Tillman. Uh, it stays on the same plane that he delivers it from, and hitters are always waiting for the ball down in the strike zone. Pitchers are always thought to throw downhill. And but not him with this fastball it just stays on that same plane and hitters have a difficult time of barreling it up. Spin rate is becoming a, a big evaluation tool. Yes it is. Let's I mean, see one oh. How else can you explain several guys that can't catch up to 92. Cans out of there. Two outs. Colin McHugh with the uh, Astros a good example of that. Yeah. Koji Uehara. Uh, who pitched here briefly pitching for Baltimore and Boston also has a high spin rate his fastball is on the 86 88 but he gets tons of swings and misses too. Here's Iglesias with two outs. Tillman meanwhile has now retired three four five six seven straight. He's cruising. He's about to make it eight. Popped up to Davis. One two three inning. Tillman through five. Scoreless. Tigers baseball presented by Bell Tire.
Let's take a look at our Jimmy John's freaky fast delivery of the game. Justin Verlander came out throwing lots of fastballs. There was some contact, but not a whole lot of hard contact. He also got swings and misses on the fastball at 93. But look at these off speed pitches. Absolutely filthy. The first one was a curveball, and the last two just absolutely nasty sliders. And Verlander looks as good today as he did five days ago, throwing only 46% with fastballs, however. Tillman 14 of 19, Verlander 12 of 15 in first pitch strikes. Pedro Alvarez leads it off, and he'll look at a strike. Shift is on for Alvarez. Castellanos moves the other way into right field. Alvarez, Scope, and Flaherty. When they bottom him the fifth, no score. Pops up a punt. Back in the seats, 0 2. Trying to get it down that third base line where no one's playing. There's a lot of room down there, but it looks like uh, he's a little uncomfortable trying to bunt. You think? <laughs> <laughs> And also where that last pitch was all he's going to do is pop that one up anyway. No one to the count. Ball high and away one and two. We told you Verlander's last outing pitched seven innings, but his pitch count got up. So Brad basically had to take him out of the game. But today, pitch count's in pretty good shape. He's only thrown 60. Ooh, good swing right there by Alvarez. You know what I wonder? If the Tigers know that Alvarez is going to lead off and he's going to, they're going to shift against him, why not have Castellanos take his warm up ground balls from short right field where he is right now? That's a good point. You know what? Instead of taking him at third base and then running over there to right field. That's a good point. Practice that throw a little bit. The one two is low. Two balls, two strikes. One of the things that we do see, though, we do see guys like the Castellanos. Right? Before the game, they'll hit him some ground balls right where he's at so he yeah. gets a feel for the grass. This grass here is very slow. Some of the slowest grass in baseball. Very high grass. Now the 2 2. Oh, just off the plate. 3 and 2 on Alvarez. Scope and then Flaherty to follow 7 8 9 in the lineup for Buck Show Walter. Now JB ready with the 3 2. Don't miss. It's a dangerous pitch. If you're going to throw the fastball inside three balls and two strikes, you don't want to miss right down the middle. He missed right down the middle and got away with it. Literally right down the middle. Outfield has Alvarez played to pull it as well. I'm going to pull the string on him now. And he walked him. Lead off and on here in the fifth. He joined Fox Sports Detroit and the Tigers on May 24th for a very special evening when we honor the armed forces and military veterans. When you purchase a special ticket package, $5 to be donated to the Michigan based Fallen and Wounded Soldiers Fund. For ticket packages, visit tigers.com slash armed forces. They shortened that today for you? They did. Yeah. They did. I, <laughs> I know even, they got short. I didn't even say a word either. They did it for me. <laughs> I noticed it was a little shorter. It took me two batters to read it last night. <laughs> it's out of the scope. Man, you pick up on everything. <laughs> Swinging a miss on one. Scope bounced out in the second. He is 0 for 1. This is the first time tonight the Orioles have gotten the leadoff man aboard. The 0 1 pitch. The pitch count for JV is still in good shape. Verlander's got scope shaking his head after that last off speed pitch. And when Verlander's got all four of them working like uh, he does so far here today. It's tough on the hitter.
Did he go? They want the appeal. Negative. He did not. John Tumpane said he held up. And a couple of breaking balls at the bottom of the strike zone thrown by Justin. And this one, Scope able to lay off of. Now you go back upstairs with a good fastball. You change his eye level. You get the swing and miss. You get the strike three. That almost could have been called a strike. Good point. One and two. Little chopper slowly towards short. Iglesias charging. There's one. Relay. Not in time. Boy, they turned that as quickly as he possibly could. Well, we talked about the grass being very slow here. You see, that's how hard the ball is charged by Iglesias, the shortstop, because he knows how slow the grass is. So he gets there and he grabs it. Quick flip to Kinsler. Kinsler turns it over in a hurry, but not before that left foot of scope gets on the bag. It's a nice stretch by Miggy, too. Ooh. They nearly got him. No, I think they might have gotten him. You think so? I think so. And we'll see if Brad wants to look at it. Let's take a look at this angle. Hard to tell there. But the Tigers are going to determine whether or not they want to challenge. He's out. Yeah, he is out. He's out. They should challenge this. They're waiting for a different look. They're not going to do it. Well, here's the super slow mo, and right there, he's out. He is out. Mm. Well, if you're Brad, you have seen it over and over that plays that are really close. Yeah, they don't. Uh, they don't overturn. Them, so. They don't overturn. Them. He's not going to waste a challenge here. Now with one on one out, here's Flaherty. How about that slide though the other day and by Anthony Ghost? I, I haven't talked to you about that slide yet. The slide where uh, Dusty appealed and it was Ghost did not touch the oh, ball on right, the slide. Right, right, right. Second base. Did you know that they had kind of amended that rule that changed no. you know? And now it's if it, if the base runner doesn't disrupt the guy trying to throw the ball, they're not going to call a double play. High fly ball, shallow left center, Upton coming on. And Justin will make the catch, two outs. Here's our high speed pitch, and it is brought to you by Xfinity. Justin's gotten up to 94 and as low as 75 with several good breaking balls. Joey Rickard will step in. Rickard hit by a pitch in the third. He bounced out in the first. Two seventy eight batting average for the rule five selection from the Tampa Bay Rays organization. He had a nice year in the minor leagues last year. The Orioles scouted him. They liked what they saw and they selected him in the rule five draft and here he is in the major leagues. Been a nice story early on this year. And JV misses low, 1 0. Rickard, how about these splits? 375 at the house, 180 on the road. Here's the 1 0 pitch. Good block by McCann, 2 0. Lead off walk to Alvarez with two outs now. They have a man at first base. White Sox tonight winning in New York, 7 to 1. Chris Sale on the mound. You can, uh, you can cancel Christmas. <laughs> There's a strike call two and one. They're not coming back in that one. Cancel Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> two balls and one strike on Rickard. Machado waiting on deck. Would prefer to get Rickard and uh, deal with Manny next inning. Here's the two one. Low three and one. And as good as the White Sox record is in the Central, they really are not hitting all that well as a team. They've got some good pitching, started by Sale and Quintana. Their bullpen is very good, but their offense hasn't really showed up yet. But they can really catch that baseball. Five games up. 
are the Chicago White Sox right now. 11 games over 500. Driven foul. He was out in front, three and two. White Sox have been a pretty good defensive team this year. They are among the best in pitching as well, and they have rolled that to a 23 and 12 start. Full count, three and two. No score here in the fifth. Game two in what will be a four game series. Going on 3 2 and a fly ball in the air to left field. Stephen Moya is under it. And that will retire the side. No runs, a walk, and one man left as we go to the sixth. Top of the lineup coming up Kinsler, JD Martinez, and Miguel Cabrera. For at Oriole Park tonight for game two in the series, and neither team has a run. Who will blink first? Verlander and Tillman have been awfully good this evening. Tigers will have the top of their lineup. It'll be Kinsler, Martinez, and Cabrera. Tillman got him one, two, three in the fifth, and now has retired eight consecutive Tigers. He'll bring home a pitch that just missed outside. One ball, no strikes. Single pop up for Kinsler. It's not that often that we've come here to Baltimore, man, through the first five frames and neither team has scored a run. Not in this ballpark. But both guys are on top of their games this evening. Justin Verlander, lots of first pitch strikes, good fastball, good secondary pitches. And Tillman really hasn't made many mistakes either. He's been up for the task and pitches very well in this ballpark. He has surrendered four hits tonight, but no damage. Five strikeouts. Off the plate. 2 1 on Kinsler. Putting him pretty much straight up, maybe shading a little bit toward the third base side. 2 1 pitch is hammered foul to right field. Tillman had allowed six earned runs in the first inning of his starts this year, but tonight he avoided any scoring despite giving up two hits in the first inning and has kind of rolled since. There's a chopper hit the third base, gloving to his left Flaherty. One out. 
fans don't forget to celebrate Polish American night Friday May 20th the Tigers battle the Tampa Bay Rays at 710 special ticket packages include a Detroit Tigers Polish American night t-shirt and they're available exclusively at Tigers.com slash Polish. Always a great event every year in the Motor City Comerica Park. Now some of these Tigers hitters need to get ready to hit that fastball because Tillman's been giving them a steady diet of them. Ball one to JD. Single strikeout for Martinez. Tillman's pitch count is uh, at least per inning steadily gone down. He had a 14 pitch third, then 10 in the fourth, and eight in the fifth. That has kept his pitch count in pretty good shape. There's a strike on the outer edge, 1 1. No shift on JD Martinez. Slight shift in the infield to the pull field. And JD hits about 389 when there is no shift, but when there is a shift, he hits about 226. But no shift here by Buck Joe Walter. A little bit outside, two and one. So if you're shading a guy, that doesn't qualify as a shift. I wouldn't consider this much of a shift here. Yeah, but they are shading him a little bit on the right side of the infield. Yeah, these two gentlemen, the first baseman and the second baseman. Two and two now on Martinez. But you would think with the numbers you know, that he's posted when there's no shift, nearly a 400 batting average, that they would shift on him all the time, like most teams do against Chris Davis, the first baseman. There is just so much data and so many ways of interpreting that data. Well, all of our jobs have changed you know, the way that we do our jobs these days with all the new information and data that we've been given. I mean, for, for instance, you had those numbers you just said on when he is shifted, when he's not shifted. Right. But there's also data that suggests that JD is not pulling the ball as much this year. He said he get more back up the middle. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, what numbers do you look at? There's just so much stuff to sift through. Now the 2 2 again. Off the plate, 3 and 2 on Martinez. I used to be able to go into like the visiting clubhouse and see some of my friends that are coaches and just kind of sit and chat for an hour before the game. You can't do that anymore because they're all on their computers. Too busy. They're all crunching numbers. They have no time to even talk to you anymore. Beat your rod, is that what they say? No, they don't say that, but they might as well <laughs> say it. Get out, ball. And the shallow right field trouble coming in. I mean, those are the best times. I mean, you go into the visiting clubhouse and you see some of your old friends that you played against, whether it be the manager, sure, whether it be some of the coaches. But when you go in there, everybody's got the computer out and everybody's crunching numbers and trying to figure out how to win a ball game that night. Here's Cabrera, 388 career against the Orioles in 52 games in his career. And some of them guys are my age, so they don't maneuver that well around their computer. <laughs> Well, I thought you were going to say just maneuver around well, period. <laughs> no, Physi around that computer. Physically. That too. Well, they've got the shift on here against Miggy. They want Miguel to take the base hit. Yeah. That's what they want. Just, they know he'll do it. Just keep it in the park. Yeah, they know he will shoot one to the opposite field and just take the lousy single. Tillman. Has retired two here in the sixth and ten consecutive batters. Starting to incorporate a lot more slow breaking balls here in the sixth inning. Is Tillman. The one one. Spun him out of there. Two and one on Miguel. Something else uh, we've noticed the fact that Tillman very seldom shakes off the catcher weeders. And whichever game plan they've come up with here this evening, you know, they pretty much perfected it. And then he shakes. <laughs> nice job. The 2 1 is <laughs> outside, 3 and 1. Strikeout flyout for Cabrera. The flyout was hit deep to right field in the first inning and very nearly left the ballpark, but didn't have enough. Here's the 3 1. And he walked in ball four. 
So Cabrera is aboard now. They'll take on Victor Martinez here. Second walk of the game for Tillman, but his first since the second inning. Victor one for two. I was looking at Martinez's numbers here in the month of May. Victor now has 18 hits here in the month of May, 17 rotter singles. Mm. 17 of the 18. Here's that wacky shift again. Tillman works it home. And it's hit right into that shift. Diving stop. Machado goes to second for the force. And the fact that he was playing that deep allowed him to make that play. Otherwise, that's a base hit. But Showalter does it again. They find a way to get Martinez. Stretching out to his left, Manny Machado. Getting over. Tonight, look no farther than the two starting pitchers, Verlander and Tillman. They've been dealing. Yeah, Tillman with five strikeouts, Verlander with four. And yeah, both have walked a couple of batters. Not a lot of contact in this one. JB back to the mound, and Manny Machado will stand in. Two, three, and four. Machado and then Jones and Davis. Machado has gotten a steady diet of sliders and curveballs from Verlander. And for the most part, Justin's kept him quiet this evening. Strikeout pop up for Machado. Two and on the count. Dangerous count here if you decide to throw Manny a fastball. Machado came in leading the American League in hits with 49. He leads uh, the American League in a lot of leaderboard categories, and they're the damage categories too. Slugging percentage. You mentioned the hits. He's got tons of home runs, multi-hit games, extra base hits. I mean, this guy is all over the leaderboard at the top. Now Verlander with the 2 1. Swing and miss. Good pitch. And he upset with himself. He helped Verlander out there. But that's what happens when you're looking for the fastball. It's a 2 1 count. You want to get out ahead of it. And you will leave the strike zone every now and then. Chano has had to shift over to shortstop with the injury to J.J. Hardy, who fractured his foot. Swing and a miss struck him out. 
Machado is now one for three. Time for a game break now, Mickey York. Thank you, Mickey Parks. Got some big time power. Yes, he does. And Minnesota trying to snap a seven game losing streak. Now, Verlander facing Adam Jones. Driven in the air, deep left center field. Up and going back, track wall gone. Adam Jones, a solo homer, and the Orioles strike first. Adam Jones pretty much the only one in the batting order that has had any kind of success against Justin Verlander. And that is now his third home run in his career against JV. And Adam has been swinging at the first pitch in all three of his plate appearances. Fastball up drilled by Jones into the Baltimore Orioles bullpen. It had that sound. Eighth home run allowed by Verlander this year. Chris Davis stands in. Baltimore scored seven runs in last night's game and did not hit a home run. The American League leading 50th home run tonight. Verlander has given up more homers than anybody right now in the starting staff with eight. And this crowd all of a sudden has gotten a little energy. Verlander knew that sound. He leads all center fielders in home runs since 09 with 186. Here's the 1 1. Davis goes the other way, but foul back out of play. Chris Davis has a single and a walk. Here's the one two pitch. Swing and a miss. Davis out on strikes five of them now in the strikeout category for JV. Check it six strikeouts. Six for Verlander, a shorter than one. He punched out to Machado to start off the inning. Two away now for Trumbo. Trumbo away, ground out, strikeout. Good outside, 1 0. Home run that Verlander allowed just the third hit of the night for the Orioles, but it has broken a scoreless tie. That's fouled back. One ball, one strike. And Verlander first time through 276 really good second time through but once he gets to the third time the batting average kind of gets up over 300 and that's exactly where the Orioles are sitting right now third time through their order. Two and one. Should Trumbo reach Matt Weeders on deck. Here's the 2 1 offering. 2 and 2 on Trumbo. Justin gave up a single and a walk in the first. He scattered a, another walk, another single, a hit batter, but really uh, not much going on tonight until that Jones home run. Swing and a miss, and Trumbo is out of there. 
But the Orioles take the lead. Adam Jones goes deep to left center. And it's 1-0 Baltimore. Lead on the home run by the center fielder Adam Jones and the most home runs since 2011 the Orioles now with a thousand and ninety five and this is an Orioles team that uh, really pretty much every position has a guy that can hit one out. Yeah they've got a lot of power they, but they also play in a ballpark that uh, uh, gives a lot of home runs but they are powerful. Now the Tigers down by a run have Castiano Supton and Moya. Tillman has retired 11 of the last 12 that he's faced. Nick is 0 for 2. Foul tip into the glove for strike one. We're at Oriel Park at Camden Yards tonight in Baltimore. Mario and Pemba, Rod Allen, certainly happy you're with us tonight. Chris Wazalewski, our producer. Director is Brian Moss. The 1 1. One ball, two strikes. No right on a nightly basis. We have so many folks that go into a telecast that it's it's almost hard to mention everybody. But our truck is full of folks that uh, make us look good on a nightly basis. No doubt, we're trying, and they make us look good every night. Here's the one-two drill toward left center field. That ball is going to land up against the wall. Castellanos on his way to second. He is in with a double. Nick has his first hit of the night. Time run aboard. It's a 93 mile per hour fastball that Cassianos is able to reach out and he absolutely drills it over the head of Adam Jones. It short hops the wall and by the time Jones picks it up and gets it in a stand up double for Cassianos his seventh double of the season. I'm starting to think ahead a little bit now and it appears that they're going to have some at bats here with learners in scoring position and I told you earlier that Anthony Ghost is hitting 429 in his career against Tillman. So maybe we might see Anthony Ghost in this inning and Anthony of all the guys in the starting lineup Mario his six hits are more than any other player has against Tillman. Well here is Upton right now with the man at second ball one. Here's Anthony. Question is, who would he possibly hit for in this inning? McCann. McCann? Yes. Here's the 1 0. Right by him at 93. Yeah, most of his fastballs have been right around 91, 92, but that one he reached back to get a little extra to Tillman. 
Still throwing that four seam fastball right by a lot of these Tigers hitters. And Tillman and Glance at second, and he's showing bunt, and he pops it up. Foul. One and two. Upton right now trying to apparently just get that guy to third. He's behind in the count one and two. Long look by Tillman now he steps off. The Castellanos double the fifth hit of the game for the Tigers and the tying run now in scoring position. Nobody out in the seven. Here's the one two. Low two balls and two strikes. Upton has struck out twice in this game. Stephen Moya waiting on deck. The 2 2. Got him. Strike three. He has struck out three more times tonight. That one looking. And pretty much every single pitch that uh, Tillman threw to Jay up in the sequence uh, was a fastball. We'll bring up Moya. Steven a double and a ground out right back to the mound. Tillman tries to pitch himself out of trouble here in the seventh. Moya looks at a strike on one. That's one of the few changeups that uh, Tillman has thrown today. Was hitting 310 down in Toledo. Found it straight back, and the count goes 0 and 2. The International League Player of the Week last week. Tigers looking for any kind of jump start for their lineup. They called him up yesterday. And Brad hoping he could put a charge into one right here. Time called as Moya steps out. These numbers were in 31 games at Toledo, so that's pretty impressive. 24 RBIs. He had worked diligently to cut down his strikeouts. Here's the 0 2. Tillman's at 100 now. We saw how good the back end of their bullpen could be in last night's game. O'Day and uh, Britton you know, pretty much locked down you know, for Baltimore and have been for the last couple of years. Now the one two swing and a miss struck him out. Two outs. And Castellanos has not moved. Seven strikeouts for Tillman. That'll bring up McCann. James a walk and a ground out. He tapped one in front of the plate and was thrown out by the catcher Weeders. He 
And McCann looks at a strike on the outer edge. James not so sure about that call having a chat now with Alan Porter. McCann on the road trip now 1 for 11. And a base hits driving a run here would do wonders for his confidence. Here's the 0 1. Tigers offense being stymied again tonight, at least to this point. No one's on five hits to try not to waste a leadoff double by Castellanos. McCann fouls it back, and the count goes one and two. Now Tillman is one strike away from pitching out of the jam. Home run by Jones, the difference in this game. I think Buck Showalter has moved all night. Here's the one two. Just got a piece of it, fouling it off of Weeders. Something fell off the uh, mask of uh, Weeders there. Broke it? Sure did. Oh, and uh, Weeders now caught the brunt of that on the bridge of his nose, so they'll try and stop the bleeding. Where's the cut man at? Fix him up. So it's the 10 to Weeders. We'll tell you to follow Tigers baseball live with the MLB.com and Pat app. Stay up to the moment at any moment with game day, live game video highlights, stat cast, news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball on your phone or tablet. It looks like they've got the bleeding under control. You got to be special to want to be a catcher. Most people call them the tools of ignorance. Yeah, but my former uh, broadcast partner and the late Joe and Gary Giola used to call them the tools of uh, <laughs> intelligence. <laughs> intelligence. <laughs> I'm sure Jim Price probably feels the same oh, way, yeah. doesn't he? <laughs> over and over. Here's the set on the one two. Just off the plate. Just about everybody in the Baltimore Oriole infield took one step toward the dugout after that last pitch. Alan Porter did not give Tillman the call. Should McCann reach Iglesias would be next. Two balls two strikes. One on six now for Tillman in the pitch count. And the 2 2. High fly ball, right field, picking up a little bit of steam. It's going to go to the warning track, right in front of the wall. Trumbo makes the catch. Tigers strand a leadoff double. Coming up, the seventh inning stretch brought to you by Jeff Glover and Associates Realtors.
Bernstein Law Firm, official legal services sponsor of Fox Sports Detroit. Bell Tire, get the lowest tire price, period. Bell Tire. And by Chevrolet, more than you expect for less than you imagine. Well, you had a couple of good pitchers on the mound today, so you knew it would be somewhat of a pitcher's duel. Let's start with Tillman. He has pretty much gotten it done with lots of first pitch strikes, and then he'll throw that breaking ball up there to get you to chase. But a fastball upstairs has been his go-to pitch. He's gotten a lot of strikeouts on that pitch. Justin Verlander also has gotten a lot of strikeouts on his fastball upstairs, but his secondary stuff has been really good, too. Crisscrossing his pitches in the strike zone, finally got caught with that fastball that was outside that Adam Jones connected against Verlander. It's the third time Jones has hit a homer against JV. Well, it's been a frustrating stretch for the Tigers offense. They get a leadoff double by Nick Castellanos in the seventh inning, then strikeout, strikeout, flyout. Yeah, in the last uh, 11 games, the Tigers' overall team batting average is hovering uh, right above 200. It makes you scratch your head to be sure with names in your lineup like Martinez, Kinsler, Cabrera, Martinez. On and on, the Tigers just offensively have not been able to get it done. They're leaning on Verlander here to uh, keep his good outing going tonight. Hey, tomorrow, Major League Baseball on FS1 is back with another doubleheader as Jose Altuve and the Astros take on David Ortiz and the Red Sox. What a year he's had. And AL Central rivals collide when the Twins square off against the Indians in a game you can only see on FS1. It all starts at 12:30 Eastern, or you can watch it all live on Fox Sports Go. For the Orioles, Matt Weeters will lead it off. Weeters, Alvarez, and Scope. Tillman able to get through that seventh inning unscathed. They've got the bullpen warming now to the Orioles. Here is Weeters who is open too. That would be Darren O'Day in their bullpen. Foul back 0 1. O'Day pitched last night a scoreless eighth. Here's the 0 1 pitch. Swing and a miss. Readers fooled there 0 and 2. Shaded to pull on the infield. Here's the 0 2 pitch. Rip to left. Weeters goes the other way with an 0-2 single. Leadoff man on here in the seventh. We'll bring up Pedro Alvarez. Walking a strikeout. Justin now is at 93 pitches. And he threw 111 in that start against Texas five days ago. There's a strike on Alvarez. 118 is his season high. That was the 10 strikeout performance. Averaging a little over 106 per start this year. Third most in the American League. The count on Alvarez. That's it. They make it 0 and 2. And fastball from Verlander at 91. Now with a two strike count, Castellanos moves over. Not nearly as deep with the runner at first base. 
to rather bunt of, is taken out of uh, possibility here. The 0 2 is popped up. Shallow left field. Moya comes charging in. Still coming. One gone. When you play as deep as you do here at Canyon Yards, and the Tigers outfielders have done that several times in the series, it could be a long run on those balls in between. And the key for Moya is you can't be running on your heels. You have to run on the balls of your feet. Last night there was a play where he came in, he was running on his heels, and the ball nearly went over his head. So you have to stay in that good athletic position as you run in uh, on the balls of your feet. Here is Jonathan Scope. Scope is over two, a couple of ground balls. Did reach on a fielder's choice in the fifth. Ball one. One run on just four hits tonight for the Orioles. No runs, five hits. For the Tigers, the home run by Adam Jones. The difference, he hit it in the sixth. Can able to smother that one. Two balls and no strikes. Fernandez's pitch count has been in pretty good shape most of the night. Pretty economical in most innings. And delivering the type of outing the Tigers needed tonight, but the offense. Has not been able to counter against Tillman. The 2 0. 2 and 1 on scope. Open April had an 11 game hitting streak. He has some suck in that bat. He's got five home runs this year. With 15 last year. Now the 2 1. Sometimes wonder, Rod, when you talk about all these home run numbers, how much. Is due to this ballpark, and we talk about that with the Rockies team always as well. I think quite a bit of it is due to the ballpark, but they do have some guys that have a pretty good track record having hit home runs in other places they've been too. And Davis has real power; he can reach the seats in any ballpark. And Pedro Alvarez also has some really good power. Trumbo, yes, indeed. It almost appears that they go after that type of player in this ballpark. We had Jim Leland on our air. Where were we at? Uh, in Cleveland. Yeah. And he was talking about how he just loves the three run home run. Right back up the middle. Kinsler flipping Iglesias. One and a double play. Nicely done. Four, six, three. What a turn by Kinsler and Iglesias. And on to first for the double play. They are two of the best in the league. Tigers baseball tonight presented by Bell Tire.
Chevrolet tomorrow night in game three in the series. Sonny Ball Sanchez for the Tigers, Mike Wright for the O's. Anibal Sanchez looking for his fourth win against three losses. The ERA is almost six, which is very high for Anibal Sanchez. Also, he's walked 22, which is too many. He's finally starting to get you know, that new delivery down. So we are headed down to the top of the eighth. It appears the Orioles go to the bullpen and say wall side windows pitching change Darren O'Day 17 strikeouts for O'Day he's only walked four you know, this year pitching in the 16th game he's been outstanding in the eighth inning for the Baltimore Orioles basically since he has put their uniform on last night he came out of the eighth he walked J.D. Martinez but then got three outs he's got two pitches he's got a fastball and a slider and neither pitch touches 90 miles an hour. Jose Iglesias leads it off and takes strike one. That's what you're going to get. That sidearm angle, about 86 miles an hour with some arm side sink into the right handed batters. Iglesias pop up and a double play ball in this game tonight. Showing bunt, he lays it foul. Now he's down 0 2. I've always been a fan of bunting with no strikes. Never really a fan of bunting after you have the one strike on you. No strikes is cool, but one strike it puts you in such a deficit. Yeah, you're almost forced to lay it down and get it down. Otherwise, the 0 2 count is tough. Here is O'Day's 0 2, and it's fouled straight back. As you could imagine, a guy that throws from the angle that O'Day throws from, even when he does throw you a slider, it doesn't have much depth to it. And it's pretty much east to west in the strike zone. Here comes that slider again. A little soft line drive, base hit. Good job, Iglesias. He got the bat on the ball and flared it to center. Lead off man on. Iglesias fell behind O'Day. No balls, two strikes. He got that frisbee slider a little bit too close to Jose. And he was able to hit it right over the head of Jonathan Stoke. Bring up the top of the order now, Kinsler. Tying run at first. Tigers have their sixth hit. Kinsler a single and three at bats. Lots of room for Ian Kinsler on the right side of the infield with Davis holding on Iglesias. That's a strike 0 and 1. Tigers had a leadoff double in the seventh. Couldn't score though. They couldn't move him off second base. No. Castellanos was anchored at second. Never moved. And the Tigers have not had many opportunities. Well, really both teams haven't had many opportunities tonight. The 0 1. Soft roller toward first base. Davis will fire to second. They'll get the out there. Relay not in time. That's a nice play by Davis, really taking his time to make sure he got the out. Let's take a look at the big boys, big play of the game. Adam Jones is accounting for the only run in the contest. It was a fastball at about 92 that was around the belt bumper. It was outside. He reached back to get it and hit it into his. Bullpen. Jones started trotting immediately, and that thing straight to the back of the wall. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. He knew it was gone immediately, but it wasn't in one of those no doubters. He must know his ballpark. 
Yeah, that's his fourth home run in the last three games. So Jones starting to heat up. Here's J.D. Martinez. Kinsler is the runner at first now. Recently stole his 200th career base. Martinez a single a strike out in the fly out. JD checks his swing strike call the foul tipped it says Alan Porter. I don't know if uh, Ian is entertaining the thought of running but if he does he better get a pretty good jump because O'Day not taking all that long to get the ball into readers hands he's taking about one point one second and you can see that readers has caught three of seven might be too risky especially with Mickey coming up in the on deck circle well at point here's the 0 one foul back the other side of that though I think sometimes you think managers feel that they have to impose their will and take some chances with an offense that has been struggling as much. That's a great point. That is a fantastic point. And you can tell Brad has become uh, really frustrated with the offense and their inability really to put up the numbers that many felt they would. But if you get a guy thrown out, that'll make you think over and over. One, two. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. J.D. Martinez swung at a pitch at the letters, and there are two gone. So here is Cabrera. Nicky is over two of the walk. O'Day has thrown nine pitches in this inning, all strikes. It's amazing how efficient uh, he is and has been for the last number of years. They gave him a four year contract in December. Little chopper to third base, fair ball fielded by Flaherty. That'll be it for the Tigers. They get a leadoff single. But strand man, we go to the bottom of the eighth in Baltimore. Still one nothing O's. Down one nothing. Justin Verlander going back out there for another inning. He's only given up four hits in the game. 
You know, one run that was the home run. He's punched out seven walk two. And he's been outstanding at throwing first pitch strikes. 18 of 26 uh, so far in the game. Flaherty leads it off and then Rickard and Machado in the home half of the eighth inning one nothing Orioles. First one in from JV is a strike call. Ryan Flaherty is so for two fly out ground out. Time called as Flaherty steps out. The sixth time now that Verlander has gone over 100 in a start. It's a ball high. One and one the count. There is action though. Drew Verhagen warming up. Now the 1 1 pitch. 1 and 2 on Flaherty. Orioles have their closer tuning up Zach Britton. That stuff he was featuring last night, man, wasn't even fair. 95 miles an hour with that kind of sink. Yeah, he had a snappy 1 2 3 ninth. Got him on the outside corner. Verlander racks up another strikeout. One away. We check in now with Trevor Thompson. Mario over this last two series in Washington and here in Baltimore a lot of the guys have their girlfriends their wives and family members along with them for the trip which certainly helps keep them grounded and breaks things up especially when things aren't going so well Kyle Ryan out in the bullpen hoping to get into tonight's ball game he has family here as well his dad Kevin his mom Betsy his wife Courtney he's got seven or eight in all who made the trip here to Baltimore to watch him play and a lot of these guys told me before the game it really makes a difference when you can go on the road and have that kind of support when you leave the ballpark especially with what they're going through lately hopefully they can snap out of it with JV on the mound here tonight and his fiance watching as well. All right Trev thanks yeah it's always great to have uh, some familiar faces surrounding you. It's an easy trip though I mean because the trip started in D.C. and then a very short drive over here to Baltimore so it's an easy trip for the family. Yeah nice combination D.C. and then into Baltimore. There's a ground ball foul third base side. I know Brad was talking about it when he was a player in his playing days. He would have his family on the road with him. His girls were young back then. And he said the only problem with that is his girls would get up early and he wouldn't. Or <laughs> didn't want to. You got that right. Or never did. Well, you don't get to bed until, you know, one o'clock pretty right. much every night. The one one. I don't know about you, but when we leave here at ten o'clock, ten thirty, it takes a while before you even wind down. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. You know, the adrenaline that these guys have every night to compete at this level. It does take a while to wind down. Two balls, one strike. And Joey Rickard pulled foul again. Bobby Dickerson, third base coach for the uh, Baltimore Orioles, and he's the man that is largely responsible for. Manny Machado when Manny made the transition from shortstop to third base and now Bobby responsible for Manny again and getting him acclimated at the shortstop position again. Fly ball in the air shallow left field Moya. Two gone. As a matter of fact a couple of years ago right before they called Manny Machado up to the big leagues they started working him at third base but they started working him out in the morning. Because they didn't want the media to see it. They didn't want his teammates to really know what was going on. But shortly after they started working him out at third base, Bobby Dickerson told Buck Show Walter, I think he can play third base in the big leagues. And all Manny has gone on to do is win a couple of gold gloves at that position and also a platinum glove at third base. And it's not even his natural position. And you can see that he's high in all of those ranks offensively in the American League and Major League Baseball. I think his war. Last year was the highest in baseball. Machado? Machado. Because I think Jason Hayden was on the top, like second or third. I think Manny's at the top of the list. Close to it. Now Verlander's 1 0. Pulled to third base. Castellanos has it there. Machado is up. Going to be a 1 2 3. Outstanding effort tonight for Justin Verlander.
screenshot presented by Magic Window last year, a couple of years ago, excuse me, 2014 in the month of May. Victor leaned on one here at this ballpark and hit it onto Utah Street. Victor knew it was gone as soon as he hit, and his teammates were fired up. He and Miguel Cabrera had gone back to back in that inning. So here is Zach Britton now the closer for the Orioles trying to get the final three outs in the wall side windows pitching change. His stuff is uh, pretty good. And a few closers have the stuff that he has nine for nine and save and save opportunities. He doesn't walk very many. He's got that power sink at about ninety five ninety six miles an hour and a real nice curveball. Victor Martinez is one for three batting right handed for the first time tonight. The average now 361 for Victor. Here's the 0 1 pitch. Little chopper right back to the mound. Britain handles this one, one gone. Yeah, just to finish that uh, story on uh, Victor Martinez and how far he hit that ball in 2014, Marv, you know when you hit him that far, you get a plaque. Yes, you do. With your name on it and everything. Up there in Utah Street, just like you have in Hollywood, you got your own Walk of Fame star, don't you? I got two of them actually. <laughs> How do you get two? Well, you got to be good. Got to be special. <laughs> Here's oh, Castellanos. Oh. Well, this game wouldn't end one nothing, would it? In this ballpark, that would seem not possible. Castellanos a double to lead off the seventh. And uh, the number the Tigers never moved him off that base. There's ball one for Britain. Yeah, that was a big inning. You know, somehow, some way, you got to at least get him over the third, which would give you a better opportunity to try to tie the game. Here's the 1 0. Castellanos. A little agitated at that last call by Alan Porter. Now the 1 1. Right back up the middle on the ground. Machado ranging left. Two gone. Tigers down to their final out. Justin Upton comes strolling in. Upton is 0 for 3. Three strikeouts in this game. The only run in the Adam Jones home run in the sixth. Upton is the Tigers' last chance. Swing and a miss. At 96. Justin Verlander did all he could tonight. As he continues to pitch extremely well in this ballpark. And a chopper to third foul, and now the count is 0 2. On Justin Upton. Tigers came in having lost nine of their last ten. And they're down to their final strike here tonight. The 0 2. Drill to right field on a line and caught. My Trumbo. You've got to go back all the way to 2004. September of 2004, 12 years ago, the last time the Tigers shut out here in Baltimore. It just doesn't happen very often. And it's just the way things are going right now. Adam Jones home run, the difference in the game. A solo shot off Verlander, that's it. And the Orioles win it tonight, 1-0.